<sighs> Sweat Equity Podcast. Here we go. I'm a little tired. It's Sunday morning. Caleb, how you feeling? I'm feeling good. I got my coffee going. Got my good friend Brandon Underwood here from College Hunks Moving. The one and only. That's uh, right. That's right. All right. Well, let's get into it. We'll talk uh, a lot about moving and how you're <laughs> a hunk. Let's get moving. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sweat Equity Podcast. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes. I gotta fix that uh, intro outro. Are we, are we recording? Are we? Yeah, we're recording. Okay. And here we are. That's how professional this thing is. Uh, Sweat Equity Podcast. Go on iTunes. Subscribe. Give us a five star. Give us a one star. I don't care. <laughs> Give us a real review. But that, all of that stuff helps. If you like this podcast, it's about uh, realistic business advice. Kind of the anti Tim Ferriss uh, podcast for you. Do us a favor, send it out to a friend, send it to a loved one, copy the link, and just go, hey, I think you should listen to this. Caleb did it to me yesterday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I listened to the whole thing. Yep. Uh, with Tim Fer- uh, it was Tim Ferriss' podcast. Yeah. It was, it, was a, it was a good episode. I think the difference maybe between us and, and Ferris is a lot of his stuff is for you know venture capitalists and for people looking to invest into companies and how to be a founder of a big startup that you know wants to go out and and change the world we're we're doing stuff on a on a small business level we want entrepreneurs we want people who um and i'll take something from their from their podcast that i, I sent you people who go from being entrepreneurs to entrepreneurs i really like that Ugh. term they use Ugh. i like it i like God. it because it helps paint a picture for people okay to to, to kind of so come hacky. on over it's so hacky. Well, it's hacky but it, it it paints that picture to the people kind of from the outside looking in so entrepreneur i the person who thought of that term was like, "Oh my God, I'm amazing! <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> suck my own yeah, dick." It's not, uh. it's not, it's not profound uh, to say the least, but uh, but it helps paint that picture. But um, either way, we're glad you're here. We're glad you found us and you've tuned in. Like Law said, um, whether you love us, whether you hate us, just uh, you know, give us some feedback. We want to hear what you guys think. We want to hear uh, your thoughts on the podcast, what you've gotten from it, what your friends are thinking. Um, so send us some love either way. We want questions. Yeah, yes. we want. Send questions. Us, send us some questions. I know it, it feels silly. You can do it anonymously if you want. Yeah. It's the stuff I talk about with pretty much everybody anyway. So send us some questions. Go to law at tocoworks.com, L A W T O C O W O R K S dot com. Woo! Or Caleb at C A L E B. That's not, right. Not with a K. Not with a K. At tocoworks, T O C O W O R K S dot com. God, sounds good. Uh, we give a plug. We try to give a plug where an advertisement might be if it existed. If we had one, we don't have an advertiser, but we We're like to just there. give shout outs. Yeah. Um, before we get to college hunks, hauling junk, drone compliance, our buddy Steve Fantetti, nice. attorney to the stars. Yes. He, um, he's he got a company that does drone compliance for commercial, com- I guess business ventures that need need FAA regulation. He's mm-hmm. figured out a, a hack. Because oh. he's, he's an attorney, he kind of legal zoomed the drone compliance thing. Very so nice. If you were to do it as a business, it's like seven hundred, eight hundred dollars. Through theirs, it's like four hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah. So it saves pretty some cash, great. Man. And if you're doing any kind of videography, our friends at Diamond View Studios or yes. Two Hundred Eight Monkeys who are across the hall from us, absolutely. If they have a drone going and they're profiting off of the shots they're doing, they have to have it FAA compliant, or they'll get. I think the fines, one of those crazy fines, like uh, before you'd watch a movie <laughs> with a VHS, it'd be like, yeah. to copy this movie is $800,000 and you'll go to prison for life. Yeah. It's one of those kind of fines, but they're actually doing it. <laughs> but so they, they regulate this? They this are. They are they're uh, upheld. Uh, he, he dropped some knowledge on me. I was like, I, I had no idea. I, these things are fl- A drone flew into like my sister's house. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> What are we doing? How are we going to figure this out? <laughs> I was like, if you can make a drone um, repellent, if you can figure out Ooh. how to like knock out its signal so it just yeah. it dies. I, I got my first batch of drone rage uh, probably two weeks ago. Drone rage? Yeah, I was on a, I was on a bike ride um, in, the, in the area here, and, uh, and I saw some people flying a drone over a house doing a um, what hopefully was 
you know, some real estate work, trying uh-huh. to get some photos and, and get some cool shots. And uh, I'm writing it down. I just I, I just saw it in in the sky, like above the house, and it was totally probably fully compliant with whatever they needed to be doing. Mm-hmm. But I just got that feeling and I, I told who I was with I was like you know I want to find a way that I can just shoot these things down without like <laughs> getting arrested where I can just pop these things out of the sky because it's I just hated looking at it up there and like the buzz and the people with the little controller I just like you're, they're just they're like the new coffee snob the Ooh. drone flyers they're the new coffee snob to me and it's like you just don't I don't want I don't want to see them yeah I don't want to know they're out there I'm, I'm conflicted because I'm, I'm with you in the, the curmudgeon kind of way where I wanted to shoot every one of them, but I kind of want one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I I uh, like I make like the coffee asshole. Um, I I I become what I hate. I'd like basically. I'd like a, I'd like to know about a good cup of coffee, but I don't want to hear you talk about it all goddamn day. Right. That kind of thing. Yeah. So Brandon, uh, yep. let's let's get into college hunks. Tell us the background of it. You're a franchisee. Yes. Is that right? Uh, tell us tell us what it is. I know it's it's been getting a lot of national. Uh, recognition for for it being the best moving company in the country. I think it was on. Uh, oh shit, I'm gonna fuck this up. I want to say like CNBC. It then. was correct. Yeah, okay. Woo, not bad. Yeah, there you go. Um, Paying attention. Not as tired as you think. I'm not. Boy. I'm not in the demo, but <laughs> I know what's going on. I'm. I'm. I'm proud of anything ta- that comes out of Tampa, and so it caught my eye. I guess explain to the listeners what it's about. You know what it is. Why it's why is it different than any moving company? Uh, I think uh, there's always the ones that are like two minute. What is it? Two minute a truck. Yes, the, the other guys. Yeah, yeah. Are they the are they your main competition? Um, you know what? I, I really like to think that there's not much competition for what we're doing because yeah. we are revolutionizing this industry. Um, just to touch base, you know, we are doing so many services that a lot of other service industries that are in our service aren't providing. So right. we're a moving company, we're a junk removal company, and we're also a labor company. So, you know, we have a lot of things that we can provide to our clients and um, we come in there with a professionalism that the other guys don't provide. Oh, I'm, I'm my bad. I, so I'm thinking of the moving company, but there's the hauling junk aspect yeah. to it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Well, we, we do, we provide both. So it's almost like we have... T- two to three different businesses within our business. Um, we have sure. junk trucks that go out and service to junk jobs, and then we have move trucks that go out and service to move jobs. So it's, um, you know, we kind of, we see which guys can go in which field and kind of just stay in those fields because they, you know, excel in either or. Well, I mean, it, it's one of those things, we've talked about it as we're growing as a consulting business, we're finding that, hey, we're gonna probably have some sub brands as well because it all kind of, Right now, everything's under one uh, S corp, co- you know, uh, company. But we're gonna have a apparel line that needs to be its own kind of thing. But it's under our umbrella of sorts. Uh, this is technically through Cigar City Comedy because uh, <laughs> if anybody sues us for defamation, they're not gonna get anything. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, you know, we we I, I yeah, I get the sub brand part of it because it's like well. We didn't know this was an, uh, a market. We didn't know this was a thing that existed, and it needs to have its own identity to a degree. It needs to be under the college hunks umbrella, but it needs it needs to be its own deal because there's a different set of rules, I'm sure, and different yep. kind of employees. Mm-hmm. And um, that's kind of what happened. You know, when I first started five and a half years ago, uh, it was just a junk removal company, and then all of a sudden we noticed that there was a demand for moving, and we said, well let's start moving nice so then we opened up the college hunks moving as well along with it and actually here in tampa uh, we do 80 percent volume and moving 20 percent in junk removal so it's you know completely switched around on which we once started out as a junk removal company uh-huh yeah. safe to say that was probably a pretty good <laughs> yes it, it was <laughs> like absolutely. oh we're noticing a little bit of a need here it's like uh, and this is now what we do yep <laughs> well it's crazy i've i've only had movers a couple of times uh, my experience and from what I understand from people older than I am when they talk about it is like it's kind of like it, you let these like you let a bunch of shitheads in your house to move <laughs> stuff and you're like I'm worried they're going to steal something that kind of thing. I guess tell me how that what what makes you all different than you know the those kind of guys were we had it one time and I was like 
I, I don't want this crackhead in my house. This guy's yeah. a crackhead. Like yeah. I don't yeah. want him in my house. I mean, he's skinny too. I want some. <laughs> I want some bulk. You want some hunks? <laughs> yeah. I want some. I want some heft. I don't want this guy who's like just ripping it because he's on methamphetamine or something. <laughs> you know, that's uh, that was definitely um, the niche for us was to break away from that stereotypical laborer. Yeah. Um, you'll see the other guys or whoever you want to refer to him as. Um, with not the same caliber of employees that we have. Mm -hmm. You know, the biggest thing we pride ourselves on is that when these guys are on board, they're not just movers. They're not just junk removal guys. They're learning how to run their own truck. So they're doing their own breakdown. They're doing their paperwork for the end of the day. They're learning how to properly, uh, basically save their time throughout the day and make sure that they can come back with the best net that, that they can. So mm -hmm. they're learning how to run these trucks if it was their own business. They're running their own metrics and everything. So you're, you're you're not yeah you're just you're not teach you're not like hey you're a laborer come in here Correct. you're here for yeah. f eight hours you just ride in the truck move stuff from a to b that's it uh, you're teaching them you you're spending a lot of you know sweat equity yep. on uh, that's the titular <laughs> line <laughs> <laughs> but you're you're teaching them how to um, have ownership in it D and was that conscious was that did that happen by chance or was that one of those things where you're i guess i guess i was going to start to answer for you but i was saying like is it is it something you're like y'all wanted to do that but you didn't know how good of success that is i i always feel like it's better to have employees that have ownership in their work yep and so you get a lot more out of it it's a tougher initial climb to really get them to to want it and you're going to weed out a lot of shitheads but at the end of the day, you have less turnover because people are into what they're doing. No, absolutely. When we first started, um, you know, building leaders is one of our core values. And we have five core values that we stand by to this day. And um, that's what's made us so successful to where we're at now. You know, a lot of our guys that leave, you know, they're not leaving to go to another moving company, another junk yeah. moving company. They're going to go to a career right. field. Um, and they take away a lot from this particular job. And, um, you know, I firmly believe that um, their output that they put out in the field and what they bring back is going to dictate how they're going to get paid or how they're going to get rewarded. So, you know, it's that's definitely a big drive here. And these guys are not just your typical laborers. I mean, I, I, I just can't quantify the level of professionalism that we provide to a job. It's it's unreal. Yeah. And I know having been having been a customer before um, a couple times now, um, it it is something that I've been shocked by. Where I I, I usually look at it because Brandon and I have been friends for a long time. As oh yeah, you know Brandon's just hooking me up, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get some help moving. But it always turns into almost I don't want to be like corny or cliche, but like the college hunks experience where these guys come in, you know, they're in in somewhat of uniform, um, and every single one of them is courteous as can be, careful with your stuff, and they're quick as all hell. And it's kind of like you can't help but notice the job they do because, I, I mean, I've moved myself, uh, except for the last two times I've moved. I've probably moved 10 times by now. Um, I've moved myself all the other times. And you sit there and you're like, this would be about, you know, 30 minutes in. I'd have broken four things out of rage. <laughs> and I'd be like sitting on the couch having a beer, taking a break already. But it's like, we're, we're like a quarter of the way done and I'm not even sweating. And I mean, these guys are just, they're working nonstop. So... I don't know I, I can attest to kind of the, the ownership that each individual guy takes and kind of to, to segue into it a little bit, you know, I've noticed just with Brandon as well, Brandon's gone from employee to franchise owner. Um, and that's kind of a testament to kind of the values that the company puts onto their employees. And if you want to kind of talk about how that how that transition happened and how that's come about going from you know, you were moving, doing doing junk removal, yep. do, you know, driving the trucks, loading boxes, all those sort of things to now um, <laughs> doing everything an entrepreneur would do with hiring process, managing, leading, um, accounting, marketing, everything. If you want to talk about that a little bit, I think that's really cool insight to have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, uh, you know, when I first started, you know, I was just on the trucks looking at it as a part time job, working the weekends while in school. Um, and then after a couple months, I started introducing a couple more days into that routine. And then I come to uh, the point where I was doing everyone's job above me, and <laughs> <laughs> which was not that great. <laughs> um, and then, you know, quickly started to climb the management ladder 
from operations manager um, to being GM slash operations manager to being the general manager of the corporate location here in uh, Tampa. And uh, I've been doing this now for two and a half years. And, um, you know, I, I bought into the system and I bought into what uh, was provided to me as far as, um, you know, something I've never seen or witnessed before from such a young company. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just the group of guys and everything. I bought into the complete system to the point that I obviously bought into a franchise. It's not Scientology. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, my question is, and this might be good advice to give out, uh, to impart in, in anybody in any industry, you went from doing everybody's job. I feel like there's a lot of people that are employees that go, I'm doing everything. I'm doing oh more yeah. than all my bosses. Mm -hmm. How'd yep. you kind of break through that? How'd you get through that kind of goal line stance of just, there's, I feel like uh, every fifth friend of mine is doing they're they're in that position where they're screwed like i'm doing everybody's work i'm not getting uh, credit for it and i don't know how to get to that next level um I, at first i wasn't as cutthroat about it uh -huh. i was just kind of bearing down and doing the work and letting my actions reflect what i was doing and i still think that's a great way to get about it Agreed. um mm -hmm. but then it comes to a point where you're going to find yourself at a crossroads where you're like you know what i've done so much here's my opportunity, you gotta take it. And you have to take an opportunity. But I'm saying, did you set up like, did you try to talk to the owner or the, at that point, maybe, you know, the CEO or something like that? Yeah, I mean, the CEO and president, we sat down and I think they realized from me putting all that work in and just kind of putting my head down and grinding that they were like, here's a star here. And I go, listen, I've been doing this for the past seven months. Right. I'm not sure if you guys noticed it, but I was putting those 70 hour weeks in and they were like, okay, let's go forward. Let's go ahead and promote you to the general manager. I mean, that's a tough, that's a tough conversation to have because at one point you're doing it for seven months, 70 hours a week, but at the same time you're like, you probably are like, that's not, I haven't been doing it that long, but at the same time I know my value as compared to everybody else around me. Um, and I, I'm, I'm going to bet that after you got, you kind of moved up, you're a lot more empathetic to that now you probably you you kind of price realize those guys are in your position as well um as a manager maybe somewhat but i can't really agree on that just because i think people are in a position sometimes that they shouldn't be okay and then mm -hmm. maybe you have somebody underneath them that is much better than right. they could be it's a realization that's that's business if somebody's better than you they're gonna have to take your spot at some point sometime yeah. um and I, I think that's definitely what happened and you know it just evolution and I, I think kind of one thing it could boil down to as well is that you you made yourself um irreplaceable i mean you w and, and i think that's how we we move up right and yeah. we yeah. maybe it takes seven months maybe it takes three months maybe yeah. it takes five years um but uh, as long as you're in a company making yourself um you know non-replaceable and saying yeah well i know how to do all these guys jobs above me you know, now you're putting your employers and your higher ups in a position to make a move where they're going to say, all right, we're either going to lose this guy who gets it, who's bought in, who does everything right. And then some or, you know, we're going to just keep him down there and, you know, he's he's, he's going to go away. Or do we move him up? Well, do we give him more responsibility? A lot of higher ups get get scared, though. They get threatened. They well, feel like they can get boxed out. I, I agree. I think there's no a, pun I, intended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think there's I think there's a level, uh, you know, there's there's layers to it, obviously. And uh, each each individual company, corporation or, or, or small business even um, is going to be unique in itself. Um, but I think, you know, with Brandon, I think the situation you're in and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but. He had direct access to the owners and founders of the company. Um, so it kind of jumped a couple levels of, yeah. of management a little bit where he kind of got to go over some people's heads. Um, and I think that's cool. I think that's something hopefully, you know, listeners can kind of take away. And there's some people that might be out there that are in the position that either you are in or you were in and can say, man, this, you know, this sucks. I'm not getting much recognition for what's going on. I'm doing, you know, five different people's jobs. I'm doing it better than they can. And I'm taking care of my own stuff. You know, I think the better way to look at it, it, it's that way. But if I'm out, if I got hit by a truck, mm -hmm. let's say, yep. uh, and I'm out. For Not a, a, a other guy's truck. <laughs> other guy's <laughs> Not truck. They're truck. careless drivers. Uh, crackhead moving company truck. <laughs> right. <laughs> LLC. If I'm out, oh, they're <laughs> limited liability. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they're smart about this. If I'm, if I'm hit by a truck, 
how bad am I going to be missed? Right. I feel like yeah. that's the bigger indicator than yep. trying to go, hey, uh, I know how to do everything. I'm, I'm irreplaceable, irresistible at the same time. Wink. <laughs> right. But I, I feel like that's the bigger thing. If, you, if you're out of the whole... If you're missing, the business will suffer dramatically. I feel right. like that's your biggest kind of value. So when I, I think that's where you can put yourself in that strong position where companies, good companies are structured to where um, they do invest a lot into people, but they don't rely on one person. Right. Yeah. So if you if you do that, if you're out there and you're starting a small business and it all relies on you and something happens where you can't continue anymore and your company is going to go under because of that, you need to restructure the way you've got your business going. We, d- we uh, I just think <laughs> about coverage uh, every couple of hours. Yeah, I was about to say, how many times a day? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, if I get hit by a truck, what's yeah. going to happen? You know, it's that kind of thing. Like, uh, Josh can step in and read my notes and immediately know, my p- business partner can yeah. immediately know what's going on. Right. Um, but that's that takes a lot of discipline to write down everything that's going on. Absolutely. And hey, this is what we're working on. Here are our tasks. Here are our projects. All that stuff. I guess we're kind of getting down a kind of a more general path. Mm-hmm. I wanted to ask, how, wait, how long has the company been around? Uh, company's been around coming up on nine and a half years. Okay. Yep. And nice. And it's seen a, a lot of growth. I feel like the the service side of it is your your best competitive advantage. I would say. Is that you're you're getting the right people? How do y'all hire? Is you know that's a huge thing, obviously for our industry, especially from like uh, you know our frontline employees, uh-huh. the laborers. Um, you know, my biggest thing that I've come to realize is that a lot of the guys that are on the trucks, their referrals tend to be the best referrals, and the reason being is because those guys are the hunks that we're looking for. Mm-hmm. And usually you surround yourself with like-minded people. So when they come in, they aren't just those laborers that are filling an application yeah. that have 10 felonies and <laughs> half of them are for theft. Right. Um, so now we're talking about wasting a lot of time yeah, reading those. Yeah, exactly. Which it's, I'm sure you guys have to weed through, too. Yeah, we do. I mean, because you, you never know. You might have somebody that you know fills an application that wasn't a, a referral and he comes in and he's you know a star. But um, I'd say a lot of our core guys are you know inside referrals from the other guys. And... Uh, like it's an interesting kind of uh, labor kind of to manage. Is there burnout rates? Can you, can you like uh, I was talking to a massage therapist and I was going trying to help her with her numbers and I was like, well, you really can only probably what? How many can you do in a day? And she was like, I can do s- probably six. And I was like, you can do six a day. Yeah. For how many days? And she was <laughs> like, oh, I don't know. I guess five. And I was like, y- you don't think you're gonna wear out because that that's that's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. It's a shitload. And I was like, I was trying to tell her she needs to move her price up in that respect. Like, you're going to burn out. You need to have yeah. better value and get, you know, just core clientele and build that up because it's too hard. It, the margins don't make sense. I feel like there's a huge burnout rate for m- hauling stuff, moving yeah. stuff. Uh, is that, I mean, like, do y'all have a, a like utilization rate, cap rate on how many hours they can work or something like that? Yeah, you're definitely conscious of the hours that the guys are putting in. Uh, the way that we structure it is like a five-day-on, two-day-off split. You know, we have a lot of guys that are in college that um, can only work the weekends. Right. So you don't really have to worry about those guys in that regard. Um, we, I'd say probably 75% of our guys are in school still. Um, the rest are, you know, I have a couple guys that are taking a semester off because they're saving to go travel. So, you know, it's, I have people all huh. over the place, you know, um, but you're definitely conscious. I, I don't want anyone to break 40 hours plus, um, you know, generally our guys are anywhere from 25 to 35 hours. So everyone's fresh. If you mm-hmm. have a big move, you don't have to worry about guys coming in and they're exhausted um, and I, everyone's got fresh legs. I feel like that'd be part of it, too. You want them to be fresh because from my understanding from friends that have used you all and you you would know firsthand, yeah. Caleb, uh, they're fr- the guys, <coughs> they're friendly. Yeah, uh, that's part of y'all's value proposition is, hey, these guys are going to come in. It's almost old school. It's almost like mm-hmm. the milkman who's it really is. nice. It's uh, Correct. they're coming in your house. And I feel like that <coughs> it's so weird what who we allow, allow in our house. That's a fucking bum uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. electrician or a fucking plumber. They're just fucking assholes. And yeah. Shitty <laughs> and grimy and rip you off. Contractors, especially yep. security uh, installers. 
the security installer law's been hurt many many it's, times it sounds like it. Many no i mean people. like think, <laughs> yeah. uh, that think, list is long think about the rolodex of people you let in your house oh, it's true it's yeah, it's it very is, true yeah. and uh, and i think we've all uh, if we haven't fallen victim to it um like you know our our parents have or we have friends who have and it's almost just that general fear and it's that it's just such a, a pain in the ass when you know you're like oh shit i got a plumber coming over today like i what am I going to have to deal with? Like, I, I tell you right now, I don't let my wife stay home alone when random people come over. Really? Yeah. yeah I make sure that I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. I, I'm I'm kind of the same it's way. It's 2016, yeah. man. My wife's <laughs> Asian, so I'm not worried about it. <laughs> she's, she's good. Yell, she's yelling at them. <laughs> so, she's, so she's like a ninja, so it's fine. <laughs> but I, I guess uh, one question I have about there's a there's a lot of disintermediation apps meaning uh uber airbnb i'm sure you, you guys see this kind of come around the corner mm-hmm. how are you going to compete with task rabbit i think i think that's the biggest one probably the biggest threat for y'all in terms of this peer-to-peer kind of moving system and what is what is task rabbit help because I, I don't know what it is personally i don't know if the listeners will it's in new york and la it's in the bigger cities right now like mm-hmm. the tier one cities you would do if you're launching an app um basically everybody in new york uses it i know that where it's it's four things it's like handyman uh cleaning service moving mo- moving <laughs> moving and uh there's a fourth thing i can't think of but maybe plumber and so they're essentially the Uber for for those services. Right. And so in New York, everybody uses TaskRabbit, and it's it's going off like Game Busters are trying to, f- you know, I- expand it. They're not going to expand as rapidly as Uber or any of that. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, I feel like there's going to be a lot more of those around the corner, and I wonder what y'all are thinking about going forward. Like, it's not an immediate threat, but it is something you got to keep your eye on. We have some plans. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, we, we have some plans. Uh, right. um, we, we definitely have some things up our sleeve for later on this year and gotcha. most likely two se- 2017. So All right. be That's on the lookout. Cool. Yeah. Look for the Hunk app. Uh, nice. Yes. So awesome, man. Find Hunks anywhere. It, 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 mash it up with Tinder. <laughs> just do you know what I, sometimes i feel like we are from some of the calls that we get in really so, yeah <laughs> so the name is interesting the name is one of those things it's like it, it sticks with you do you know who came up with it or like what's the story behind it i, I just feel like it's an interesting name hunks is like almost probably going that was something like in the 80s 90s i feel like was yep. used a lot and I, but i feel like the name's very catchy on a very good commercial level like like pods is not the most yeah. ingenious name but you look at it and you're like okay that makes sense on a big yep. commercial level college hunks is just a great name because it it kind of it it's a brand identifier immediately you're not getting you're getting call you think you're getting college kids whether you know it or not like maybe the kids aren't in college it sounds like they mm-hmm. all are yeah um I don't know. Is that a prerequisite? It's it's really not. I'm not going to shun anybody away for it. But uh, it is one of those things. Well, th- you can always say, hey, they're part of our college. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. there it is. They're yeah. learning. Yeah, Punk buddy. University. Hey, shit. Yeah, I buddy. mean, if you guys are really doing, if you guys are really teaching them kind of the entrepreneurial part of yep. this, that's uh, invaluable. I mean, that that's way more than any class you'll have at a community college. Mm-hmm. Um, my thing with the college hunks name the reason it's really great is because it it makes you think of it already makes you think that these guys are legit because they're college kids. Whether we believe college is good or not, uh, I think there's too many and it's too expensive and there should yeah. be more tech colleges uh, or trade colleges. But our lizard brain still thinks hunks and still thinks college. Uh, this person's somewhat educated or trying to improve themselves yep. instead of being like these are just. <laughs> Whoa, I saw one that was so shitty the other day. <laughs> I started laughing. It was like, was it like fat old man moving company? It's like, <laughs> what the fuck is that? Why would you do that? Uh, that's just up front from the get go, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah. but like, you know what you're getting. You know it. Fat old molesting man. <laughs> you have to buy them lunch. That's <laughs> a pr- yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mu- lunch must be provided. Yep. <laughs> so my thing is, how did it come? Up, how did it come up with the name? How has the brand been recognized for the name? It sounds like you might get some some ladies calling. Yeah. For uh, services, uh, tell us about that. 
Um, you know, the name came about with uh, Nick and Omar, the CEO and president of the company, really good friends, and uh, they were just looking for like a part-time job or something to do over summer. So mm -hmm. they came up with this idea, and uh, they had their mom's van, and they were just using their mom's van to haul away junk in uh -huh. the neighborhood, and they were, saw that there was a demand for it. So Omar went to uh, University of Miami, and he uh, submitted it into a business, um, you know, contest, and it ends up winning. Uh -huh. And they were like, wow, we, I think we really do have something here. So they ended up going that corporate lifestyle after college in cubicles, you know, the dreaded cubes, mm -hmm. and um, realized, man, this is not what we want to do. Why don't we revisit College Hunks Hauling Junk and let's try this? And yeah. they did, and it's where we're at now. So uh, owners are relatively young or partners. I'd say you're you're an owner. You're a franchise owner. Franchise owner, yep. um, And just... I guess do you get like old ladies that are like, yeah, I'm gonna get some guys in hot pants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, it's it's crazy because the three most stressful things in the world: death, divorce, and then moving. Because moving usually is connected to the divorce or death. Okay, and it's huh, you know it's pretty, it's pretty cool little. And it's 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 a mm -hmm. really stressful. That's a nice pitch. I like yeah. that. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that's nice. and we and we, like I said, we provide a stress free service. Um, I forgot so public speaking in there, but. Uh, <laughs> I always hear because I'm um, do stand up. I always hear like, "How do you do that?" It's like the second biggest fear or the first biggest fear. Jerry Seinfeld had the thing about uh, you'd rather be you're more scared to give the eulogy than being in the coffin or yeah. something like that. I can't mm. remember, but uh, go ahead. Sorry, I cut you off. Um, so we we do get a lot of phone calls in, um, and we're we're dealing with you know really delicate situations a lot of times, uh -huh. and you have to go in there with a sense of. Um, compassion for some of these people that were moving, you know, a divorce situation or a death situation mm. or you name it, we see it. Right. You know, you, have you ever watched the show Hoarders on TV? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen it. Unfortunately, I, I've seen it. It yeah. stresses me the hell out. We, we've been on there and... Um, really? Yeah, we've been on there and uh, those situations are insane and you have to have a level of compassion and know how to go about those situations because there it is a disease and you have to be courteous the whole entire time well the hoarding things like it's an ocd ish thing right yeah it, it's it's a way to control something because you can't control a lot of other things mm -hmm. uh, any is there i guess is there any you can i i haven't seen the episode i mean what was the story when y'all were on there we've had different franchise locations on there for various things i'll tell you a oh this several episodes oh yeah, oh. yeah we, we've had wow. several I'm, yeah I'm, sh I'm willing to bet a lot of floridians <laughs> <laughs> could they could be, probably do that could show just in down in, in florida yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you a crazy story um we got a call from the city to go look at a house because uh -huh. it was they needed a bid for the junk removal job we get there and this poor lady is outside of her house. She hoarded so bad inside her house that she had to live outside of her house. Yeah. Wow. So she was going to the park wow. down the street from her house and she was picking up all the trash because she wanted the park to look clean. But she was bringing all the trash inside her house. <laughs> okay. And it was all the all way right. to the ceiling. That's so ridiculous. It's, you know, and the nicest lady, poor thing, you know, it's, um, it's crazy what you see Damn. in this industry. That's yeah. insane. It's crazy. That's, yeah, there. That sounds like there's a lot deeper psychological issues yeah. going on there. And oh yeah. So hopefully you guys hired some psych majors to come on, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> analyze the issue, and then get all that shit out of her house. Well, but I mean, I saw watching Hoarders once. I saw the episode where it was like, oh yeah, we found 14 dead cats in here. There's 28 other ones running around in this place. <laughs> it's like, fuck this show. Like, I, I've, I can't I've do seen it. a dead cat before. Good not Lord. gonna lie. I've yeah. seen them. <laughs> I've seen them. I don't need to do it for entertainment. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't need to watch that in my free time. Yeah. I know. I know these people exist. It's just a total bummer. So, yeah. so one of the things I kind of I, I want to get to um, is, and I know you're really big into it because we talk a lot, just you know, as friends and and both being in, in business and whatnot um, on networking and mm -hmm. kind of the importance of of networking, but more so honing it in. Um, so that it's not just a, I mean, you can, you can network all you want and you can be that, that, you know, that Delta Bravo that everyone hates at the bar <laughs> that's passing out. Hey man, I'm Caleb. And you hand him a business card and people are like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Like you yeah. serious? Like yeah. that's, that's like almost, I mean, that's just, don't ever do that. If anyone's out there and you've ever handed someone your business card at a bar, when you introduced yourself, stop just just stop doing it no one's going to call you Not a good um look. but uh, more so focusing your efforts with networking and looking in the right places to network um 
and that's a big part of what you guys do being uh you know a franchise owner now and a general manager um can you talk about kind of your networking efforts and and what they've kind of done for you a little bit yeah i'm a big believer in guerrilla marketing um i don't know if you guys seen but we have signs all throughout the city oh yeah um you know we do a lot of door hangers like the small stuff that people overlook Mm -hmm. and everyone's gone to um you know using tech uh, marketing which is great and we do that as well right but everyone's forgotten about the guerrilla marketing yeah. which we used to use in the 20s the 30s and the 40s that worked so well mm-hmm. and we've gotten back to that basic um, footprint and it's worked out wonders for us mm-hmm. um, you know I firmly believe of being a staple in the community and yeah. we do a lot of charity work um, with a lot of foundations here in Tampa and um, you know that's to me as a startup company, whether you're a franchise or you're just a brand new startup, you got to do those things yeah. and you have to join some networking groups, whichever one's going to work for you. You know, I was in Chamber of Commerce for a while. I just found that BNI was a little bit more um, successful for me for what I was can, looking for. Can you for. describe what BNI is to some yeah, of our listeners? It's a business network international. And what it is, is it's a chapter. And inside this chapter, there's many businesses, neither two are alike. Uh-huh. So you'll have me, right. which I'm a moving seat. And then you'll have Caleb, um, who could be um, a dentist. And then you'll have Laws, and who will be um, an Nerd. electrician. Mm-hmm. So the whole chapter is about referring business within each other. Right. And, um, you know, so you, you feel comfortable knowing that the business is going to be passed anyone else because it's supposed to be passed amongst each other. It's very organized. You have to write down all your referrals. So it's very, very on top of things, which is good because it's forcing slash making you network amongst each other. And that's a huge contact sphere. And I, I, I can't even count all the jobs that I've had from BNI because you build relationships with these people that come to trust you. So is there is, is there a cost to being in, in BNI? There, there is a cost. It's okay. really not much at all. You pay your year fee and then your monthly dues. Um, mm-hmm. You meet once a week. It's an hour and a half to almost two hours long. Nice. Everyone stands wow, up. once a week? Yeah, that's, once a week. But but think think about no, this. No, no, I mean yeah. that's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're I, I've been in some chambers, man, and they're fucking horrible. Yeah. I, oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm and I'm sure this one. If you're if you're not there for the right reasons, because I think you can't just take referrals. You have to give as Correct. well, right? So, yes. Um, yeah. Givers gain is their motto. Um, but the cool thing about that group is that you stand up every day and you give a 30 second infomercial. Mm-hmm. So wow. you you give a pitch every single day. But every every week, every week, yeah, every, yeah, every, week. Week. every week that you I was about go to say in. every day, yeah, every Holy day, shit. yeah. Well, <laughs> practice I'm, every day. I'm, 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 I'm pitching right now. It's Sunday. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, the, the reason we do like this is because it does give advice out in a long term kind of way for us. It's marketing. Um, yep. it, you know, it is. A lot of people can listen to this and like, oh, a lot of our service stuff is we're we're a service industry, but our stuff is like. People are so scared of the tech industry and a lot of stuff. This is a way to kind of show people in a, in a consistent basis, just like that, via audio. Hey, we know what we're talking about. And if we don't, yep. we're kind of curious about it. I feel like networking, networking is a rough term. It, it's kind of the fucked out term like branding. Yeah. And I, I hate networking groups, but that one seems legit. Like that, that would it. I just I fucking I, I'm thinking about the business card guy. Yeah. Go to yeah. those chamber meetings. <laughs> yeah. That's all they are. And it's it's yeah. all the and I think that's where um I know when Brandon first told me about B and I a while back I was like, man, I almost want to find a way I can use this. Yeah. I mean, but you know, just 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 to just to go and be a part of it. Yeah. Because when you think of network, I mean, if you have LinkedIn, you get invited to networking events, and it's the most generic, annoying message you ever receive from business card guy. Or girl, <laughs> and um, adjust your settings. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, it's it's one of those things where you go and you show up to a bar and they're like it's going to be drinks and food and happy hour and a guest speaker and it's really just a bunch of people being like, hey, I'm a you know I'll sell you life insurance and here's what we can do for you. Oh, you're not doing this. You need to do this. And it's like I didn't come here to get lectured. Like I want to network with business professionals, not someone who has to show their boss they're doing stuff outside of the office to right. bring in business. And that's really what a lot of those people are doing. So it sounds like with B and I, it's it's a lot of business owners Correct. that are there. It's not the intern who's showing he's gung ho about becoming full time. You know, yep. it's not, you know, those people who are just going to annoy you to death with business cards and flyers and shit. It, it seems pretty organized and pretty well, well kept uh, to kind of help everybody connect. So. And, and the sharp thing you did about marketing, this is fucking the, one of the biggest things about marketing or whatever you're doing in that marketing bucket is you looked at the, 
the the chamber meetings you're going to and you're like this isn't moving the needle i need to do something different oh yeah where a lot of people just spin their tires they go well i'm doing i'm doing five different chambers and uh, no, you know nothing's coming in it's like well look at you have to look at your results how many Correct. leads are you getting out of this are they quality you know what what kind of p- is there a long term thing maybe you're not getting leads now but maybe down the line maybe you're getting more commercial ones or something like that but i tell you dude people run a business you got to sit back you know you got to go my what i call my old man jewish walks <laughs> old old jewish man walks did we did we decide those are hands behind the back or no um, walking stick that's like a morpheus kind of way okay. of walking okay but <laughs> i i turn the phone off and i take a notepad and i'll walk i'll walk around ebor city and just kind of let the thoughts of like what are we doing you know are we doing the correct kind of marketing are we getting the right kind of brand out there and I don't think a lot of people do that. I don't think ever anybody, a lot of people go, we are doing marketing tactics. These are these things, but they don't look if they're effective or not. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think a lot of people become complacent just because they heard that Tim said, oh, that works great for me. Right. Let me do what Tim does. And yep. It doesn't work for you. Just because it works for Tim doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Yeah. Find what works for you. Right. Um, well, I guess uh, y'all's, uh, where, where was going to go? You got something? Yeah. You so, look like you're about, you're yeah, and I think kind of going with those with those walks and helping clear the air. I know, I know, you know, Brandon is a a, a big, you know, workout fanatic. Um, I think you guys go to the same gym, as a matter of fact, um, yeah. that I used to go to that I don't go to anymore. It's, uh, but it's a bummer seeing him work out. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm like, God. Try working man. out with him. It <laughs> was fun. That's why I don't go anymore. I'm like, uh, I'm gonna, I'm good. Thanks. I'm gonna play the I'm good card. But I. I've been thinking about this a lot too. I have to make time to do that mm-hmm, uh, yeah. because uh, your your position might be a little bit more. Um, you, you're you're doing a lot of things that involve you kind of at least walking around all day. I could be at a computer all day, so it's one yeah. of those things where now I'm like, you got to figure out how to get in there two maybe two or three times a day to do something. Yeah. Other than I have like a yoga mat over there near the desk. I got to do that. It clears my head, though. That's the other thing. Yep. My wife doesn't get it because she didn't grow up with that. But I grew up working out since I was like 13. Mm-hmm. And if I don't have like that 20, 30 minutes of doing weights or some kind of cardio or something, I, I, fuck, I get depressed. I don't know if that's the same yeah. way for you. or Yeah. I don't, and I if do, you can yeah. kind of talk about your routine a little bit, maybe what your, your morning routine kind of looks like. Is there a workout in there? Um, and just kind of the importance that you found with exercise and staying sharp, staying on top of everything business-wise, how it kind of rounds out the day for you. It's crazy, but I do the same exact thing every single day at the same exact that's time. To- that's totally not crazy. That's, <laughs> no, called, that's called a routine, get, no, and that's yeah. good. I want to get there. I have no discipline. Yeah. It sucks. Uh, so tell us about it. You know, I, I just – I even in, in business, I think in business you need to be organized. You need to have – a routine. If you don't have a routine and you're all over the place, you are going to drown. It's killing me, dude. Yeah. I'm right now. I'm like, d- you feel. I feel so unorganized. I came in here yesterday and just fucking knocked out a bunch of just was like, spend four it's, hours. It's and overwhelming. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, I, I I've gotten we've gotten so busy before where I got off my routine mm-hmm. and I was like, I can't do this. Right. Like, I'm underneath water right now. Yeah. So I just I have the same routine every day. I wake up early in the morning. I go to the gym. I go to work at. 6 30 in the morning i'm in work so i'm up early um and then i carry about everything i do is <laughs> the same and all my yeah. uh all my employees and other management staff are like you have ocd I'm like i don't think it's ocd i just think it's me knowing what i have to do so i don't drown <laughs> yeah and i think by, it's by it's the fu- way there's good ocd that's a good ocd yeah. my yeah. buddy has yeah. it and he cleans his house like every day and i'm like that's good that's yeah. i wish i had that's like that's like when it's like well, racism, when you talk about <laughs> black dudes having big dicks, I'm like, that's good racism. I take that one all day, man. Like, that's I don't think any black guys are going to be like, y'all really need to stop with yeah. that. <laughs> you're, really, you're really getting to me, man. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, that's good OCD. That's di- yeah. That discipline, and you're, you're 100% right, it, that discipline is where you will be a company treading water or a company being very successful yep. as far as taking the lead in it. And th- it's funny when people are like, you have OCD. It's like, no, no, no. You, this is what you should be doing every day. Yeah, correct. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not at home playing video games all day long. Right. <laughs> so you get up, yeah. you're at 630, you're in the office, uh, you do, you what, bust out emails, it sounds like. Well, I mean, our guys will have long days. 
Uh-huh. So they'll leave their stuff. Like I have the same. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, the guys will leave stuff in the trucks. Uh, everything will be locked up. I'll go out there. I'll grab everything. I'll have it all set up in the morning. When they come in, I want my guys not to have to worry about anything because obviously they're doing the labor throughout the day. Interesting. And that's you know that's going to expend you mentally yeah. and physically. Yeah. So I have everything set up for them. They come in and they basically just take a packet, which would be our clipboard, uh-huh. and they can go. Every so I have everything. You're prepping laid out. them. Yeah. Everything's prepped. Um. It's almost like you have to be that babysitter slash father figure where you have to have everything in line for the kids because they need to be able to carry everything out efficiently. I don't, I don't even think it it, it it comes down to that necessarily. Maybe it does because I obviously don't work don't work with you, but um, I think it's when you when you show them that they're cared about. Yo, you know what I mean? It's absolutely. like it, it, it's almost that aspect where it's like, man, Brandon like. He gets his ass in here at six thirty. He's here before everybody. All our stuff's laid out, ready to go. You're setting that bar for them uh, uh, of saying, you know, this is the the level of commitment I have to you guys. And you know, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, you know, they show that back or they don't. And if they continuously don't show that back, you know, they go it's, find something else to do. But it, if they do, and they, you're getting them to buy yeah, in. Yes, it's it's a family. It it, yeah. re- it really is a family. And um, you know, we do stuff that uh builds our family even tighter like we'll have our all staff once a month where we'll go play basketball down the street from our office yeah. and we'll we had that competition going and we'll yeah. you know we'll do knockout tournaments and you know it's just it's a family it really really is and i think that's the biggest thing about business is making like caleb said everyone feel welcome and invited and you're going to get the best results out of the whole team not just an employee from the front line but also yourself because now you're buying in even more as well yeah well do, my question was going to be do they realize what you're doing? <laughs> you know, like yeah. it can go unnoticed and unthanked and just if they show up and go, it could be one of those things where they don't even know you're doing it. You but, know, but that goes back to the whole thing. You, you know, everyone that's an employee underneath somebody is always going to think, well, I can do so-and-so's job. That looks easy. Yeah. You know, but that's because you don't see the stuff behind the exactly. curtains. Oh, and yeah. you know, that's the most, you know, valuable stuff is the stuff behind the curtains. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's why we like this podcast. It's because it's not – it's cool to have the results, and it's cool to see y'all succeed, and, you know, you get the national recognition and everything. But what people don't realize is, like, that is a very, very small uh, piece of what you're se- – there's so much work behind that. Mm-hmm. Like, yep. and my thing with, like, if they appreciate you setting them up for the day – my thing is like it sounds like you do the you know lead by doing yeah better than everybody else more than everybody else. I feel like if you can sponge a lot of that as an employee and go that's my boss is getting here early to set me up to go. That I I just wonder if that's inspiring for employees. And I think you just said the I think the key word with with leading is, is inspiring. Yeah. And I think it, you know it can get on a on a kind of a corny level, but uh, what it comes down to is. Uh, do you make your employees want to work, you know, or, or do you make them, uh, do they come in with the same attitude that they, they left with the day before? And that's tired, probably a little overworked, you know, wondering what the hell am I doing? Or do they come in and they're like, Hey Brandon, what's up, man? Yeah. And they're, and they're ready to go and they're, they're hungry. They're energetic because they love what they're doing because you make them feel that way. Yeah. And I, I think that's, I think you can only get those results when you're inspiring people. And yeah. that's not sitting around reading inspirational quotes to them, <laughs> but that's, that's, that's the small I'm things. Not, I'm of, not a fan of that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah, I've seen your Instagram ac- account. There's no, uh, there's no inspirational memes, uh, everywhere. Zero. So, um, which is a good thing. But, um, I, I think it, there's something to be said for the, the leader that, um, he, he doesn't just lead by example mm-hmm. i mean y- you you may not even know that you do it but you get people to follow you um just because of the way you act um some of your habits you know oh man brandon serious he, he he didn't just roll out of bed and come in he's he's been up working out why so he can be sharper today so he can help us run this company they see that and they hopefully they get that and the ones that do you know they do the ones that don't they won't yeah. but those people separate themselves over time yeah. um and they kind of weed themselves out so. well i mean i i've been there I've been on these trucks. I've worked the yep. 10-hour days, and they know this. Um, you know, and if they, they're in a situation where they need help, I'll go out there and I'll slug it out. Mm-hmm. You know, I oh, have yeah. no issues with it at all. And that's part of coverage, too. When you're small, it's like one of those things where it's like, hey, yeah, I'm running the show, but... You got to bear down. Yeah. <laughs> if, if shit hits a fan, you know, 
Zyka hits two of the guys, <laughs> and uh, and <laughs> we gotta get we gotta get shit for uh, weird grandma with cats, and we gotta get it over to the other side of town. I'm fucking in there, man, and I yeah. I totally agree with that. It's it's one of those things where you just roll it up and go get it done and I'll figure out how to do everything else later that I normally do. If I give any word of advice, it's definitely treat the guys the way that you want to be treated. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I, I struggle with that a little bit too. Cause it's one of those things where we have like an intern in here and I tell him <laughs> he has no skills, so. <laughs> but I, you suck. but I'm hard on him because I, I liked that guys were hard on me when yeah. I was in my early twenties uh, the I've, I've told this I think on the podcast a few times the best lesson I got was like I would I would ask questions but I wouldn't go and look first and the f- one guy was like I was like hey how do you do this uh, V lookup in Excel and he's like oh let me show you and he got on my computer and then opened Google and he's like fucking figure it out yourself and I was like <laughs> okay yeah we have this thing where I can find anything okay yeah I should, <laughs> I should only ask if I'm super stuck or I tried yeah. I have three scenarios I tried so I feel like I want I'm trying to exude that discipline that was given to me or that kind of like, hey, I want you to critically think first yeah. and then you're not a robot, that kind of thing. Well, and then you find out who's up to the challenge, right? Yeah, absolutely. it kind of it kind of helps people separate themselves and it, it lets you know as a as a manager or, business owner or employer, whatever you want to you know classify as it lets you know what you've got. Yeah. In, in an employee. I think that's important to know uh, sooner rather than later, but I think that also kind of can develop over time too. You'll probably find you'll get a lot less questions as that person sticks around. Yeah. You know, they're willing to figure things out on their own. So, well, what, what's, uh, we'll, we'll close down. I mean, this goes by quick. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> uh, it, now I'm like kind of fired up to work on our stuff by just listening to y'all's story. Um, you didn't even work out this morning. Brandon, I did I think not Brandon. Actually. Oh, you I did. didn't either. I, didn't. I, didn't. I was gonna say Brandon's workout. You know, aura is flowing over to you. I know. I know. I'm feeling. Damn. It. I got yard work to do after this. Can't wait. <laughs> yard work. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> All right. Football season must be over. <laughs> yeah. Good <laughs> lord. Yeah. It's I, Valentine's Day, man. <laughs> <laughs> yard work. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, what going like what? What do you see in the future? Obviously, there's something around the corner to compete with the disintermediation that's going to happen in the future with a lot of stuff uh it sounds like y'all i'm guessing are developing an app in that direction what what else can we see out of uh college hunks maybe uh, you have your eyes on necessary not necessarily you don't have to say like hey we this is our this is our five-year plan but you can see stuff in the industry going around the corner or you see new opportunities is is there stuff you can talk about i definitely don't want to give away our tricks on our sleeve right um but i will say that uh we are going to evolve yeah into um something in which we can corner the market yeah and i'll, I'll leave it at that um nice. I, I think it's important for business owners to continue to evolve no matter yeah. what it is um and i think that's what we've done over the years and we'll continue to do until we are the leading service market for our market in the nation yeah and you know uh, as an owner uh you don't really start making bank uh, if your goal is to make a lot of money, and usually everybody's is. You don't start making bank until you really have this, the coverage, the employees, the system, the market share, all that stuff set mm-hmm. up. I don't want to do web development, but I can do it now. You know, no. I understand that I'm gonna have a team. You mean you? You mean you? You personally, not the company. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. as the company. I'm still doing it. Right. Uh, my partner's still doing the branding work, but we realized part of our plan was he's going to have to teach graphic designers right. how to do his style and how to how to emulate and how to think like him. Yep. I'm going to have to teach people how to you know be efficient, and we want to make bank in that direction. You teach and you kind of grow and you keep growing. Now I feel like I'm, I'm visualizing a pyramid scheme. But <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to buy some protein? Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm the Mar- Mar- Martin Shkreli of uh, of digital consultants. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like uh, y'all. If you're going at the pace y'all are going at uh, the first nine years, I mean, there's no stopping y'all. Y'all have such a y'all have such a good brand and such a uh, the customer service. We didn't even get to that part, but uh, that's how you get repeat customers. That's yep. how you get. That's how you separate yourself from the clods that are out there as your competition yeah and so i got one last question for you and we'll, we'll shut it down we know you got you got yard work to get to <laughs> but um I, so if there's if there's one thing you could let you know our listeners know about um 
college hunks uh, hauling junk and college hunks moving. Um, you know, what would you want them to know, whether it's about your employees, your business structure, your customer service? Um, you know, what's kind of a message to our listeners about your company? The biggest thing about us is that we're all up front on everything in every aspect from our pricing to mm -hmm. what you're going to get. Uh -huh. um, you know that you hire us, you're going to get professionalism okay. on every aspect from management to the person booking your job to the employees till when the job's completed. And if you want that experience and you don't want to go with somebody that's most likely not going to provide any of those yeah. things, yeah. definitely go with us. Yeah. Awesome. And I mean, people just heard you for an hour. Yep. So it's kind of one of those things Perfect. where awesome. Thank you. I that appreciate instills it, guys. a little bit more trust. Where, I'm pretty sure. Where can people find you guys? Um, you know, if they're online, do you guys have social media? Do you guys do all that? Absolutely. We're awesome. everywhere. <laughs> just just go, just search us. Um, search in uh, moving companies. We'll pop up number one or number two. Um, awesome. We're all over the place. Awesome. What, and what, what parts of the country are you in? Uh, we are actually, we're at 75 franchises nationwide Woo, now. Yeah. I had no idea. I didn't that's know it was that big. Yeah. Yeah. When man. I first started, we were at 19. Wow. Um, so we're from Florida. Florida's really saturated with college chunks. That's obviously where the brand's at, yeah. the corporate headquarters. Um, all the way to California and to New York. So if you guys need any services, look it up. Most likely we're going to be somewhere near you. Right on. Well, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, appreciate awesome, it, guys. Man. Awesome. All right, Sweat Equity Podcast. Subscribe, put a review, tell your mom. Have a good one. See ya.